Hello, my name is Georgia Curi, and the topic of my speech is cardiopathies with hypertrophic phenotype. According to last European Society of Cardiology guidelines, this kind of cardiopathy are divided in primary disease, where heart is the only involved organ, and secondary forms, where hypertrophic cardiopathy is a manifestation of systemic disorder, as in case of hypertensive cardiopathy, aortic valve disease, platelet's earth, amyloidosis, hemochromatosis, and other pathologies less represented in population. Here we can see easy, a transthoracic evaluation of hypertrophic heart and the CMR um, representation of the same case. In this short axis view, we can get an idea about wall thickness, ventricular diameters, and systolic function. More accurate evaluation can be performed with MMAD study that enlightens severe abnormal concentric hypertrophy that can lead to hypertrophic cardiopathy diagnosis according to ECS criteria. Echocardiograph evaluation in suspected hypertrophic cardiopathy must take in consideration some issues. First of all, the study of hypertrophy distribution that in most cases can enlighten a symmetric pattern, F in figure, but not so rarely can be expressed only in ventricular apex E or along the ventricle wall G or in septal wall with a non sigmoid pattern that is typical of elderly population. In case of hypertrophic cardiopathy, papillary muscles can be displaced and mitral valve anatomy can be altered, facilitating valve regurgitation, LVOT obstruction, or complication as endocarditis. Second step of transthoracic evaluation in case of hypertrophic cardiopathy concerns the study of diastolic function that can be considered an early market of pathology according to hypertrophy burden and its distribution. In most cases, leading with severe hypertrophy and secondary myocardial fibrosis and stiffness, diastolic function is severely altered, as enlightened in this example. Diastolic dysfunction and mitral regurgitation are involved in atrial dilatation and consequently in supraventricular arrhythmias as atrial fibrillation with secondary hemodynamic, hemodynamic instability. The architectural disarray generated in hypertrophic cardiopathy also involves a systolic alteration. Ejection fraction is supernormal till uh, terminal phases of natural history. In case of hypertrophic cardio cardiomyopathy, cutoff normality for EF is 17%. More accurate systolic analysis can enlighten pathological pattern of longitudinal strain with characteristic pathological values in ventricular apex and mid septal wall. Last but not least, an important feature of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the presence of systolic obstruction caused by systolic increase of wall thickness, as in case of midventricular obstruction, or venturi effect in case of LVOT obstruction. In this uh, case, hypertrophy mostly involve the septal wall. And we are, here we can see anterior systolic movement of anterior mitral leaflet during the ejection phase. This type of obstruction is defined as dynamic because the pressure gradient generated during the systolic, systolic phase usually reach peak gradient during telesystem. In almost 30% of cases of um, LVOT obstruction, is present in basal condition and can be improved or generated with Valsalva maneuver in almost 50% of cases. LVOT obstruction is considered as significant if basal gradient peak is more than 13 millimeters of mercury or induced gradient peak is more than 15 millimeters of mercury and show a typical shape.
a negative inotropic or chronotropic drugs, as disopyramide, but also beta blockers, can reduce ejection obstruction, interfering with this systolic wall thickness and improving cardiac output, increasing diastolic and systolic time. Cardiac magnetic resonance can enlighten LVOT blood acceleration, but can also calculate mitral regurgitation caused by anterior mitral leaflet displacement. In this other case, instead, um, hypertrophy distribution doesn't induce blood ejection, blood um, ejection obstruction, nor mitral regurgitation, as um, cardiac magnetic uh, magnetic resonance, resonance confirms in these images. Last. European society guidelines underline clinical and structural features to diagnostic suspicion of hypertrophic cardio cardiomyopathy. Cardiac magnetic resonance is more accurate than echocardiography in spatial resolution and in full volume evaluation and can easily show an apical form of hypertrophy that can be suspected with ACG alteration but not confirmed with echo tools. Another very specific sign of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the presence of myocardial creeps that in some cases can be evaluated even before hypertrophy spread. CMR is also a robust method for flow study and consequent for LVOT obstruction as we have already seen. Only CMR allows structural characterization, both without contrast agent using different type of sequence and with gadolinium contrast agent that has a characteristic extracellular distribution that like myocardial scar and fibrosis. LG pattern can be specific for some kind of cardiomyopathy, in example, annular pattern in case of amyloidosis and very suggestive as in this, this case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. LG evaluation allows a more accurate arrhythmic restratification in according to physiopathological pathways of arrhythmias and death prevention with ICD implantation. Now we change situation, talking about another type of hypertrophic phenotype evaluated with the transthoracic exam. This is the case of a young lady who um, went to our hospital after a car crash, possibly related to a syncopal episode. The ECG showed frequent ventricular extrasystolis, and the transthoracic echo evaluation underlined the presence of possible apical hypertrophy. According to echo morphology, we thought that uh, the image in uh, apical image could refer could also be referred to thrombosis. The um, use of color Doppler with reduced velocity scale show partial blood flow in apples, as we can see in this en enlarged image. To better delineate the morphology of cardiac structure, we use some of you echo contrast agents that allow to identify ventricular cavity and endocardial line. At this point, the diagnostical hypothesis of apical hypertrophy appeared unlikely, and a cardiac magnetic resonance was performed. The CRM study enlightened the presence of non-compact myocardium in apical ventricular wall, according to Peterson criteria. Here we can see that more than one criteria can be utilized. Tissue characterization um, with cardiac magnetic resonance can also identify a stratificated thrombus between myocardial trabecula, where blood flow has lower velocity. Diagnostic criteria for non compactation myocardiopathy must be contextualized in family history of myocardial disease, concomitant systolic and diastolic dysfunction, valvular disease, for example, Epstein abnormality, or neuromuscular diseases. Septal localization of trabecula is less specific diagnostic parameter than other ventricular localization. 
Non-compactation can be over-diagnosticated in case of dilated gabunium myopathy, but in this case, it's not already known if hypertrabeculation is etiologically involved with the cardiopathy or it is the consequence of ventricular dilatation. Other kind of ventricular hypertrophy are classified in secondary disease. The role of multimodality imaging in case of hypertrophic phenotype is important to allow different point of view. Thank you. <laughs>